All right, so we're well on our way to becoming quote unquote au fait with ArcGIS Pro now. Um in terms of the symbology, we got it down. We're adding data to our map in our pro projects. Um, but what if I want to find, you know, what if I want to display more contextual information around my data sets? How do I get to it? Right. So we mentioned in our last video, feature layers where we go for symbology. It's where we go for our transparency or our visibility ranges. We can even, you know, uh, cluster these points together if we want to. The second option, right, that's only available when you highlight the layer in the table of contents is labeling. And if we click on labeling, what I typically like to do in labeling, particularly if I'm working with uh, uh, quite large data sets, uh, is that I won't turn on label. So like on the top left here, you can see label straight away. It's going to try and label everything. Now, if you're working with quite heavy data sets, quite large data sets, it might just stop your computer, right? Depending on, you know, obviously we don't want to maybe, you know, uh, label a hundred thousand points at once. Uh, if we don't have a strong graphics card with strong GPU and RAM. Um, so what I like to do is just set it up first as well, because oftentimes best practice is we have labels, but we want to maybe do a visibility range on it. Similarly to what we have in our, our symbology as well, right? Like symbology can kick in at certain visibility ranges, right? So I set it up and then my final step is to just turn it on, yeah? Now there's multiple classes that we can have of labels and stuff like that, but that's more advanced workflows. Just to get going with labels, that's what this video is about, and that's what we're gonna show you. So first thing is to choose your field. So in this case, there's a roll number uh, per school. So that's an individual code per school. There's also an air code, which is our postcode system in Ireland. Maybe I wanna do that. That's fine, I could just put in air code. I also have the option for visibility ranges. So I only want these labels to show in beyond certain scales. Bearing in mind, I always have options to choose the current scale, right? So if I choose the current scale and I zoom in, right, I get to see it. If I zoom past out that current scale, then I don't see it. Yeah. But for now, I'm, I'm happy enough to just keep it as none. As we have with symbology, so we have galleries in ArcGIS Pro that are these little kind of templates that we can make use of. You have them available in labeling as well if you want to make use of it. Or the alternative is to choose a font. And again, we have tons of different fonts, right? Uh, if you're writing a report, right, um, and you, you, your end goal is to produce a PDF map, that sits in a report, well then, you know, maybe try and, and tie it in with the with the font that you're using in a report, right? Like Arial is pretty uh, common, you know, if you want to put in like Arial regular, give it a font size, give it a color. And then you have options when it comes to, you know, well, I just want a basic offset point, whatever it is you have different options. One thing I would say to you is that if we open up text symbol or indeed label placement as well, you do get a few more quote unquote advanced options. And I know this is only like mini how to get started with ArcGIS Pro. So we are taking it very basically. Uh, and you know, the ideal person watching this video is somebody who is very new to ArcGIS Pro. That's who it's designed for. But if you did want to take this a step further, you know, if I if I just label that now, like it's it's grand, you know, for for what it is, it it gets most of the job done. You know, I can see the air codes of each school, right, uh, on an offset, and I can change it. You know, I can put it on the center of the point, or I can put it on a basic point, or I can put a basic offset point, right. But I only have three options here. If I want more options, either in text symbol or label placement, and again, try and keep an eye out for these when they do come out in ArcGIS Pro, because there's always these little downward pointing arrows on some ribbons within ArcGIS Pro. And if I click on it, you see it replaces my catalog pane, 
but I have more options, right? So I have like the position. I have whether I want to put a halo on it or not, you know? So if I want to put a white halo on it, so it just lifts it off the base map a little bit more, I can do that as well. Right? And I have options when it comes to formatting. Also have options when it comes to position. And you see, if I click on placement here, I have three main options, basic point, basic offset point, and center point. But I have a lot more options when I open up that more, quote unquote, advanced pane, which isn't, you know, it's not as advanced as you might think it is. But if I click on top of point, for instance, it'll center the label and bring it to on top of the point. And again, you have options. If you're doing anything with lines, you know, and maybe you want to just not uh, not have duplicate labels show up at each segment on a line. You can remove duplicates, options for labeling. But the most important thing is that we are actually labeling things. If we're not happy with how it looks, we can always come back up here and say, actually, that's probably better off as an aerial bold and maybe bring down the size to maybe size eight. And we go from there. And, you know, always we have options to say, well, actually, I, I want you know, uh, my color to be white text. And then I want my halo to be black. Say. Yeah, and I apply it and I get a different option. Yeah, but just depending on your workflows, that's how to do it. I would say configure all this first. If you're going to make use of the more advanced menu, go right ahead. Gives you a few more different options. Uh, but always try and label it at the end, then turn it off reconfigure it a little bit more, turn it back on, but only if you're using, um, you know, uh, labeling for, for quite large data sets. We don't want to cluster everything together and go from there. That's where visibility ranges come in quite handy. Yeah. Um, but that's how to get started with labels.